something that I forgot to mention in the previous part was that during the running sections of the Dark Gaia fight, droplets of green blood fly up into the air after Sonic attacks the eyes. Again, it's really weird how the Wii version has more blood in it. I'm glad they took it out personally. It, it feels like it's trying too hard to gross you out. And it feels really out of place, especially considering the forced light-hearted tone that, that the story has. So exactly what was that dark guy energy supposed to do? Because when it was covering the sky the previous time, we didn't see any of the civilians get possessed earlier. So all it really seemed to do was make the sky look different. Like if it was that much of a threat, you'd think that it would have, I, I don't know, done something? I guess, I guess you could say the humans cheering is a throwback to SA2, the civilians reacting, but I still don't care. It's not nearly as emotional and impactful, for good reason. So now that Eggman's finally been completely stripped of all dignity and grace, he can finally be the main villain of the series again. Seriously. I go back and forth on whether I prefer Eggman to be comedic or threat. Because again, I can't really take him seriously as a threat when he's so one-dimensional. He feels like just a villain for the sake of being a villain. But I'd rather have him be betrayed as a threat first, and a clown second. The way he was portrayed in the Adventure Games was perfect. No, you've been saved by Sonic. Ungrateful bastard. Right See, she gets it right, and why are her eyes glowing in the dark? The That's creepy looking. Oh god. Pseudo-philosophical discussion. Darkness, darkness, the light, darkness light, light. Darkness and light are equal to rest, each other. This is not something that belongs in a Sonic up, game. Is this is straight out of Kingdom the Hearts, or... Perhaps it even belongs more Twilight Princess than this. Because Twilight Princess... The they had the moral of the Twilight is not that different from the light world. Save the speech for later. Um, Amy, I think he was pretty much done. You should have interrupted him earlier. This was such a waste of my time. I mean, it establishes that all the people were happy, but didn't they already do that? We didn't need to see. I mean, I guess we did need to see, but I just don't care. There's such little emotional impact in the plot for the entire story thanks to Chip. And now we're all of a sudden expected to care? That's not how it works. Sonic. This makes Sonic, him look humble. You must live. Okay, here's a glaring mistake. In the HD version of this cutscene, the subtitle says you have to live, even Chip? though Chip said you must live. Like, how did they overlook that? Like, the subtitles very clearly said the wrong thing there. Again, Dr. Robotonic was at least funny. And somehow he doesn't manage to crush Sonic to death by doing that. Okay then. But seriously, I do like how Sonic looks here because it looks like he's... He's looking vulnerable for once. You don't really see that often because... In the recent games, Sonic's portrayed more as a Gary Sue. Like, he's so perfect and awesome. They're so obsessed with trying to make him look cool. That they forget to make him look vulnerable so that we actually care. I mean, he looks vulnerable here because he's the butt of a joke. But that really doesn't happen very often in the later games. If you make the heroes look too powerful, then you get the Wily e. Coyote situation where you root for the villain. Fun fact, while Jason Griffith voices the Werehog as well as Sonic, taking a dark and edgy voice to it, Japan made the more natural sound of choice of giving the Werehog a completely different voice actor. Now I'm torn on which huh? is better, like I hate the Werehog's voice, but... Hooray! Chip's gone for good! And he left the bounce bracelet behind. Seriously, we're expected to take this seriously? This is supposed to be heartwarming? Even though he's been just a comedy relief joke the entire game. Suddenly, we're expected to... He's such a creator's pet. 
Like, I don't see why I should mourn his loss. I really don't. I do really like the atmosphere of this, though. The music that plays... Hi, Song! My plane was shot down without any damage to it! Seriously, this is so condescending. Even in Sonic 2, when Tails' plane was shot down, it showed consequences because the plane had a rocket attached to it when it was seen again. But in Unleashed, this starts a trend of viewers being treated like complete morons. So, they just assume that you forgot about that term. But that was Sonic Unleashed. I'll be tackling the Unleashed project later, so it's not like I'm completely leaving the HD version untouched. But yeah! We're finally at the credits, and it's nothing but pictures of Chip. You can really tell who the writer's favorite character was. He's all over the credits, he's got nothing but presence in the cutscenes, despite doing really nothing to ruin it. Everybody likes him, nobody disagrees with him. The only people who don't like him are portrayed as wrong. It all adds up to creator's point. I never really got why people don't complain about him being revealed as like Gaia. Like just because it's a twist, people think it's just fine? All it does is create plot holes. Why did Chip get released in organic form that wasn't able to fight Dark Gaia? Why is Chip an organic being at all? How did he seal him looking like that? And, like, how does the planet naturally shatter into pieces to let Dark Guy out? Because it keeps saying that it's a cycle of death and rebirth. So, how does the planet naturally get destroyed? I guess Dark Guy wakes up on his own every hundred years? But if so, then he should have been smart to know that he should have just sealed him in a different place other than the planet itself. Have you ever thought of that? And another idiotic moment for Chip. Why did he try to stop Dark Guy alone, with no combat skills of his own? Why did Sonic have to stop him in the first place? Like, it's all just forced for the sake of a forced heartwarming moment. As you can see, I'm not the biggest fan of Chip. He's the scrappy dude of the cast. I'm really glad that he's gone. He's just about repeating the same unfunny joke over and over again. Acknowledging that food exists is funny! Uh, no it's not. Now to mention that he has Looney Tunes' -esque sound effects in a Sonic game, and Sonic isn't really about being cartoonish. Sonic is about being an action series with cool excitement and thrills and suspense. He's an action hero, not some straight-o Looney Tunes. So for us to have this character who makes stupid sound effects that completely ruin the action and tension of the scenes, and yet we have this big finale that's acting like we're supposed to have taken it seriously the whole time. It just really feels like this entire story was just the product of executive meddling. That it's just this gigantic example of executive meddling just ruining what was trying to be a serious story that it was going to be overly bleak. Like, I think the story should really should have just been rewritten from the ground up. It was a mess. It had overly bleak, dark elements like the Werehog and the planet being destroyed, which not only does that destroy my will expansion disbelief, it shatters it into a million pieces and fires into the sun. Like, sometimes things are just a little too ridiculous. But still, it really does come off as they originally wrote this as a series story, and then at the very last minute, they were told, No, 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 you have to make this into a comedy! Because we're so scared of 06 that we need to have nothing but degradation and jokes. So they're like, oh crap, we, we didn't write any of these scenes with humor in mind. Uh, 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 make this guy chip. Make a joke about food. Uh, make m a bunch of food jokes. I think it would have made more sense for Light Guy to just be the galaxy that Chip talks to. But instead, Chip turns out to be Light Guy, and it feels like it was just this rushed attempt to make him more relevant. It kind of feels like the executives fell in love with this guy, and so they just put him in every single picture in the cutscene. It feels like the writers of the new Sonic games are too focused on shilling their new characters, 
And the only times that Sonic has vulnerable moments, of course, it's around the new characters that the writers are in love with. Point is, I don't think that Unleashed has a very good story. Its schizophrenic tone and the constant repetition of food jokes makes it really come off as not very enjoyable and very dull and boring at best. Way too much exposition with the characters just standing around and talking. I really don't think it's very exciting. Like, there's no action. Like, like actions don't really have consequences, so... There's just, just a entire story that I just want to skip. But the cutscenes don't let you. But anyways, I've gone on far too long about this. The gameplay is what really matters. And in terms of the gameplay, I think it's great enough that I still love Sonic Unleashed. This is still a game that I'm really fond of. Even though it's the Wii version, I'll defend the Wii version to the death. Like, the boost formula, even though it's kind of weird because it's about timed button presses, going back to it after I played the Unleashed project really wasn't that big of a deal. Like, it was kind of weird adjusting to it being on a GameCube controller, but it's not like I screwed up a bunch. It was really fun. It's all thrilling and exciting, and it does a lot to make the levels varied because it's so much that you do. Like, it's not just about boost to win, you've also got a homing attack and slide and drift. Like, don't forget drifting. And you've also got a wall jump, all sorts of stuff. Like, in general, the levels are kind of samey. It's really only the orders of the samey gimmicks that differ. But I can't defend the boost gameplay enough. Even on the Wii version, it's spectacular. Then you get to the Werehog, which has really annoying combat, because they're constantly doing the wrong moves by accident, and you're constantly swarmed by enemies that can attack you during your attack animations. Yeah, that's not cheap at all. Everything else about the Werehog, aside from the bottomless pits being really tense because the controls are so slippery, and so you don't ex you feel like the game is just going to screw you over and send you into bottomless pits. Like, it's not really going to be your fault. If the controls were better, I feel like the Werehog would be a lot better. Like, I don't know, like, I like the platforming of the Werehog, I like its level design. I feel like it's a perfectly valid gameplay style. Like, I don't think that it's outright horrible. And I feel like maybe if they hadn't had the Werehog to pad out the game, then people would have just rented the game and played its day stages, and she had to take out a whole bunch of money, and the game might have flopped. Who knows? So maybe they needed to do this. And even from a consumer's perspective, if you had a night story and a day story, then you would have played the entire day story. Now you have to play all of the Werehog levels in a row. Nobody would bother beating the game if that was the case. So you kind of have to switch between Werehog and day stages. If there wasn't mandatory combat and the Werehog levels didn't go on far too long, I'd say it'd be fine if they just fixed the controls. I'll defend Sonic Unleashed. I definitely will. There's all sorts of... Like, the gameplay in general, I love it enough that I was able to motivate myself to go back to all the Werehog levels just so that I could... I tried to collect all of the items in the game. And I tried to beat every single mission that I have. That's how you know that I love the game. Like, if I didn't love the game, I wouldn't go back to any of the Werehog levels at all. Not even for the sake of getting new items. But with all that said and done, here is 30 reasons why I prefer the Wii version of Sonic Unleashed. Number one, no metal hunting. Because in the HD version, there is metal hunting grinding the game to a halt. This game doesn't have any of that. Number two, you start out maxed out as Sonic with all the upgrades right from the start. Number three, drifting controls better. Well, that's what I've heard anyways, I never played the HD version. Number four, better boss for Shamar with no annoying block pushing. Like, as I mentioned before, like, the boss of Shamar was actually the best boss in the game. But in the HD version, you had this annoying block pushing that you had to do, and there was enemies attacking you while you're doing it. 5. Better final boss fights, which I had gone over earlier. 6. 
You can boost and even drift in the toboggan. I'm going to show that off later. 7. The Eggman Land toboggan section is just a straight line. 8. Eggman Land is separated into day and night missions rather than being one 89 minute long slog fest that you have to do on one sitting. 9. Ranking in the day stages is more based on speed, which makes sense for a Sonic game. 10. The Werehog has a drop shadow, which is really good because it's a platformer, you should be able to see your shadow below you. 11. No slowly balancing on narrow walkways in every single level is the Werehog. 12. No slowly carrying objects to press down switches more than one time in one room, destroying the pacing. 13. While there is a larger amount of Werehog levels, they're all split into six minute long experiences, rather than you having to do it all in one sitting. In 14, the attacks of the Werehog are easier to learn, so there's no memorizing button combinations. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish this entire list, but I hope you get the point. The Wii version is a lot better than people give it credit for. The Wii version trimmed out the fat and ended up with a more convenient and fun gameplay experience. And everyone ignores this because of its graphics and the usage of a GameCube controller. The only legitimate problem it has is the live system. That and the forest missions after the day stages, but I take those over metal hunting any day. Oh no, the Wii version's a lot better than people give it credit for. I take gameplay over graphics any day.